Hi, this is Brian Custer. I'm the owner and CEO of Better Walker, and I'm going to take you through a demo of the system. So we are in a client portal. This is the view your clients have when they log into their client portal. Across the top, we have a recent appointments tab. This is where I can see the most recent appointments for my pet and the notes left by the dog walkers and pictures of the dog walkers if my company has put those in. Then I have a My Account tab. In Better Walker accounts are the people and the money. So I'm John and Wayne and Gene Autry. This is uh, my financial position to the company. I have a zero balance. If I had a credit or I owed money, that would be the first thing that I would see every time I logged in. Uh, your clients can change their information for you. So in a very real way, you turn over the responsibility of keeping client information up to date to your clients. So as your client, I could look at this and go, oh, wait a minute, my phone number has changed. And I can make this change just by clicking right on the field and changing the information. This is a basic tenant of Better Walker, which is that anytime I want to change information pretty much across the board, I can simply click right on the piece of information I want to change, make the edit, and save it. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then this is another basic tenant of Better Walker. Your clients can't do anything in their portal without you having eyes on it and approving it first. So this change is going to be submitted to my dog walking company for, for approval. Um, so you'll never be blindsided by a client putting a walk on the schedule that you weren't aware of or changing a key piece of information that you weren't aware of. As I scroll down here, I've got the all account financial transactions. This is a, a ledger of all the invoices and payments that have passed between me and uh, my dog walking company. And so you can see that an invoice was issued for $116 and then I had a $116 balance, and then another invoice was issued for $100, and my balance went up to $216. And the balance continued to grow until I finally paid, right? So I made a payment for $576 via a check, and that gave me a zero balance, right? As a client, I can also click on the one-time payment and with a credit card or an electronic check, make a payment. Also, the system is set up in such a way that if I wanted to, I could add a payment method into the system, and my dog walking company could initiate charges on my behalf. And I'll walk you through that when we get into the admin side. Further down, I have all of my invoices queued up, so I can always see what my financial position to the company is and how that financial position came to be. Now I've got my, my pets tab. Here's my pet, Francois, and here's his information. Here's the notes for care. Uh, this is a public notes field. I can change this if I would like. So if uh, I wanted the walker to uh, give a treat, I could add that and Again, that would be submitted to me for approval. Uh, you'll see later on that there are also private notes fields that are between me and my walkers and that my clients cannot see. So let's go ahead and book a couple of walks. Easiest way to do this is to click right into the calendar and simply highlight the days that I want to request services for and then request the appointment. Uh, as a client, I can request three things and three things only. I can request the dates. I can request the type of service, so your services would be uh, listed here. I'll do a 30-minute walk. And then unless I specifically want my clients to be able to book a specific time, they can only choose a time slot, right? Because everybody wants their dog walked at noon, and that's physically impossible. Uh, Incidentally, the, the time slots are, of course, customizable to your company. I can also display a general service policy for my clients. If I have any pricing rules that have to do with cancellation of services and being charged or so forth, and whatever I want to communicate to my client can be queued up right here. I'll go ahead and request this appointment. And there we go. All right, so now... I'm going to log out as a client and log back in as the admin. So this is the admin view. 
We have a schedule tab with several views of the schedule. We have a walkers tab for all of my walkers information. And then again, we have accounts and clients. In Better Walker, accounts are the people and the money. Clients are the pets and the schedules. So we're in Philip and B. Arthur's account. Here's all their personal information. Here's their financial position to me. They owe me $151. Again, if I go down to the all account financial transactions, I can see exactly how we got to that $151 balance. Um, and I can uh, record payments and issue credits from the account page as well. So if my walker came back and said they left a $151 check I could go ahead and record that. I always put the check number in the notes field and hit submit payment. And you can see right away that that payment has been uh, set against their balance and now they have a zero balance. I can apply credits. I can do miscellaneous charges uh, for those charges that are outside of the regular billing cycle. Let's say you're doing a seven day pet sit and they run out of food three days into it and you, now you need to be paid for that bag of food, you would add, uh, issue a miscellaneous charge. I can charge a credit card one time, or if they have a card on file, I can charge the card on file. So that's a quick overview of the accounts page. Every accounts page is linked to a clients page, right? So if I click on clients, so now we're on Flash's page, and that's the relationship. Better Walker knows every time you walk Flash, charge Philip and B. Here's the information about Flash. You can assign the most likely walker, and Better Walker will by default assign Flash's walks to that walker. You can always uh, change the walker before you approve a request, but it's going to do that lifting for you up front. You can see again, here are those public notes, right? So here are the notes that my client can see in their portal and make changes to, but then I have private notes as well. So this is a classic one, webcam, right? This client has a webcam. You want your walker to know that and be aware, of, but you don't necessarily want to call that out for your client. So before we get into uh, creating a schedule, I do want to show you the invoicing engine, uh, which is really fantastic. We go under the business tab and we look at the service list so this is a list of the services that we offer. I'm going to go ahead and add a service item. I'm in Chicago, so I'm going to call this a Chicago dog walk. Let's go ahead and make it a 25-minute service. We'll give it a short name for the mobile device of a CDW25. I can put a description of the walk in if I'd like. And then let's say my basic rate for this is $18. But on the weekends, I charge a $5 uh, extra charge because I don't have volume on the weekends. And on the holidays, I charge a $10 service fee, which is $28. And let's say I have rules governing time of day. So any walk before 9 a.m., I'm charging $5 extra. Any walk after 7 p.m., I'm doing the same. If there's an additional pet in the house, I'm going to add $4 per additional pet. Right? So what I've just done is told Better Walker my rules. So now everything has been lowered down to the lowest common denominator. All I have to do as the admin is book the dog walk. All my walker has to do is check in and out of that walk. And Better Walker will automatically invoice it correctly. It will say, oh, it's a weekend. I charge 23 or it's before 9 a.m. I charge $23 for this walk and I don't have to make additional services to accomplish this. I'm going to go ahead and make this an option for my customers. It's a private walk. It's not taxable, although if you're in New York City, you're having to file sales tax right now, I believe. And we're going to go ahead and add that. So again, Better Walker is going to invoice it correctly, and all I have to do is book the one service, and all my walker has to do is check in and out of that service. The second part of this is that we all have those clients that we charge a different rate for the same service. So let's go to price lists. This is how we would deal with that. Here is my standard schedule. This is my standard pricing. Here's that Chicago dog walk that we just created, right? But I can also create additional price lists for different clients. For instance, I've created one for 
people that are in the suburbs or people that were grandfathered in at an old rate or their their dogs are super challenging and so forth. And if I click on the grandfathered price list, I can see that Chicago dog walk and I can say, well, the old rate was $15 and $18 and so forth, right? And then what I can do is on a per account basis, assign a price schedule to them. So if I'm in Philip and B. Arthur's account, if I scroll down, I can see that they are on the standard schedule. I can change that to grandfathered. And now, okay, again, I have lowered everything down to the lowest common denominator. Now I book the walk, my walker checks in and out of it. And not only does it price based on time of day, weekend versus weekday, holiday, so forth, it also knows to charge flash one rate and other dogs another rate based on which price schedule they're on. Now that we have our price lists and our services set up, let's go ahead and create some schedules. So the first thing you're going to notice is that no matter where we go in the system, the unread notices follows us, right? And this is where requests from my clients that came through the system are queued up for me. Um, it's a good time to note that you don't have to be in Better Walker 24 hours a day for fear you're going to miss something. The system will email you anytime you have a request for service through the system. But let's look at some of these requests. So first of all, here's that change request that we made when we were logged in as a client. So we made a change to the notes and to the phone numbers, right? Now I could look at this and approve it. Uh, if, on the other hand, it said something like, please give insulin injection at end of each walk, then I would pick up the phone and call the client. I'm going to go ahead and approve that. And it's been approved. It's been changed. Second thing is, here's the appointment request. So when I left my company, I would say 85 to 90 percent of the walks that were on the schedule ended up there through this process. My clients requested something directly through the system and I simply booked the walk, right? So here's that request for the fourth, fifth, and sixth. You can see again, it's an afternoon walk. It's a 30 minute walk. It's been assigned to the main walker and it's been the default time on the schedule is gonna be two o'clock. Now I can alter this before I approve it, right? I could look at this and say, wait a minute, this is for Thursday the 6th and Brian the walker doesn't work on Thursday the 6th. I'm going to reassign this to James. And the system's going to ask me to, if I want to reassign James to all of the walks. I'm going to say no. So now you can see James is on the 6th. On the 5th, it's Brian. On the 4th, it's Brian. I can also change the time. So let's say I really want this dog to be done as late as possible. I'm going to change it to 3 o'clock so it's the latest possible time within this 1 to 3 window. And again, it's going to ask me if I want to change it for all the appointments. I'm going to say yes. Then once I have the appointments the way I want them, I simply approve them. Now, when I did that, a couple of things happened. One, it populated my schedule correctly. Two, it sent an email back to my client letting them know that their walks had been approved. So that's the most common way to populate a schedule. You're always going to have that uh, portion of your clients that are going to continue to email you or, or send you a, a text or whatever. So how would I deal with that? Let's say Sweet Peas owner has sent me an email saying I want walks Tuesday and Thursday next week. What would I do? Well, I'd come into the system. I would go up to this search bar, which is really good. The first three letters of a dog's name, of a last name, of a person's name will get you all the information you need. And it says, do you mean Sweet Pea Olaf? I do. I'd go to Sweet Pea's page, and then I would book it just like I was a client, right? I would click into the calendar. I would say Tuesday and Thursday of next week, and I would make the appointments, right? I would assign my walker and the service. I would pick the time slot, and then I would add the appointment. Very simple, right? Um, the third way you can populate a schedule is by doing reoccurring appointments, right? So those clients that have a set schedule all the time. So let's say Flash is a brand new um, client for you. You've just done the intake and they want a Monday, Wednesday, Friday appointment going forward. 
I would simply come down here to new recurring appointments. And again, I would pick my walker and the type of service. I would pick the first day of that service by opening up this calendar icon. So they're starting next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Give them a time slot. And then I would make the last day of the appointment. I would book it. I always like to book my appointments for you know 15 years. So there's no danger of a walk falling off the um, off the books. And then I would say Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And so I've just booked 15 years of appointments in about 20 seconds. And then this pop-up is telling me that one of the appointments that I've attempted to book falls on Christmas, on a holiday. And the system is asking me how I want to handle that. So at my company, we always assumed that you did not need service on a major holiday and that you would call us and let us know if you did. Uh, some companies just do the opposite. They leave you booked for a major holiday and make you call off. So depending on how you do things, I would say, no, I don't want it booked on, a, on that major holiday. So there, we've just booked all these appointments. You can come down here and look at them. Here they are. Uh, these are the appointments for March. If I wanted to look at another date, I could look at 2021 and check. And here they are out there in the future waiting for me, right? Let's look at the anatomy of, appoint of an appointment. It's Monday, March 6th. It's the midday slot, 1230. This is the service, and here is the walker. Again, I can change any of these things. So if I decided, you know what, I really want this walk done closer to 11 o'clock every day, I can change that. And Better Walker is right away going to recognize that this is part of a series and ask me if I want to change the entire series. Yes, I do. And again, I've just altered 15 years of walks in one click. Uh, I could change the walker. I could change it to James, right? And save. And again, it's going to ask me if I want to change it for all of the series. I'm going to say no, just this one day, right? So that's kind of the anatomy of a scheduled walk on a client page. Let's look at some schedule views now. So under the schedule tab, first we're gonna look at a macro view. It's called the WAG. This is week at a glance, but we call it WAG because we love dogs. And this is an overview of my company, right? It's all of my walkers down the left-hand side and what they have on the schedule for this week. I can filter this, right? So I can say, just show me Catherine and James, right? Uh, you'll notice that as your walkers complete walks, they turn green on the schedule. If they're canceled, they turn red. So this gives you a good overview. You can see where your walkers are in their day and what they've accomplished. Next, I'm going to show you a micro view. It's called Manage Today's Activity. So, so here's my schedule for the day. I'm logged in as Brian K. So Manage Today's Activity is, is going to show me my schedule in a series of pickups and drop-offs. This is mirroring the mobile experience of Better Walker. It's this sized to your walker's phones, and as they get to Sweet Pea's house, they click Pick Up, and there you go. There's Sweet Pea's information. They can click the globe. That'll take them to Google Maps and show them where they're going. The notes for the care are there, and they just would hit Start. And the system says, are you sure you want to start? And it would turn green. At the end of the walk, they would hit Drop Off. They would click the number of peas and poops. They could enter a note for the walk. Wait. Or something to the like. And then they would hit complete. The system would say, are you sure you want to complete this? Yes, I am. And you can see. So your walkers are basically going through their day just checking in and out of walks and turning their schedule green. So when I completed that service, several things just happened. One, it was invoiced correctly. Two, my walker's pay was calculated correctly. And three, the note was delivered to my client either by email or through their portal. So let's look at the load balancing tool because this is where you as an admin will spend a lot of your time. What are we looking at here? 
This is the schedule for March the 3rd, and I have two columns of information that I can move independently of each other, right? And they, each column has the same information. It's today's schedule and how many walks each of my walkers has. So Irvin has seven, Catherine has three, Jane has four, I mean has five and so forth. So how is this helpful? Well, let's say it's six o'clock in the morning and Jane calls you and says, I'm deathly ill, there's no way I can go today. And now you have five walks that you need to reallocate. This allows you to pull up schedules next to Jane's and see who has room. So I could look and go, oh, Catherine only has three walks. She doesn't have any morning walks. And simply by dragging and dropping, I can reassign this morning walk to Catherine. So just that easily, I can drag and drop appointments from one walker to another. Now, a basic tenant of Better Walker is that if I make a day of change, so I'm changing a walk that is happening today, not only did Catherine's schedule update in real time on her phone, but she also just received a text from the system letting her know that there's been a change to her schedule because sometimes staff can be an autopilot, right? They do the same dogs over and over again. This allows for urgency to be given to any change that's made day of. So they can, they'll know that the change has happened. Uh, let's look at what these buttons do for the walks as well. So uh, I can do several things from the load balancing tool. First, I can leave a note. So let's say Trudy Smith's owner calls and says, hey, I'm pretty sure I forgot to lock my back door. Can you have the walker lock the back door for me? I can click this end button and just type in, please lock the back door. And you can see that's been added to the appointment so that when Catherine, my walker, checks into that appointment, this note's gonna be there. But again, I just made a change to today's schedule. So Catherine also just got a text saying, your appointment with Trudy has been changed to include the following note, please lock back door. So you double down on that urgent communication day of. Um, the second thing that I can do is I can mark a service as complete. So if Catherine called from the field and said, hey, I just finished Trudy's walk, but I left my phone in my car, can you mark it as walked? Yes, I can click that. And it's gonna treat me as if I'm the walker. I'll put how many peas, how many poops, and I'll leave a note, right? Simple. Now you can see that once I've marked it as complete, a couple of new buttons pop up. The first is adjust the amount, right? So let's say it's the end of the day, and Trudy's owner calls you and says, hey, I just got home and Catherine tracked mud all over my rug. And now you're in uh, customer support mode and you say, oh my God, of course we're not gonna charge you for today's service. I can use the adjust amount button and I can put zero and sorry for muddy feet, right? And that will show up on their invoice for them. Um, again, this uh, MI button pops up as well. This is more information. So once a service has been complete, I can see the walker and I can see the note. Um, I can see the timestamp that they checked in and out of the walk. Uh, you see that as an admin, your clients don't unless you want them to, but it gives you some oversight uh, on your walkers. Also, I can change the note if I want to. Let's say my walker has horrible spelling. I can make that edit, right? Um, the third thing I can do is I can set a missed reason. So let's say that Catherine calls from the uh, field and says, hey, I just got to Sammy's house and Sammy's not here. At my company, if we showed up and your dog was not there, we charged you. So I can set a missed reason. So these missed reasons are fully customizable, whatever you want them to be. Uh, but what's important is that they are linked to your pricing. So if I mark this as missed because the client was not there, you can see it turns red, letting me know that the service did not occur, but it's going to have a note on the invoice that says this service did not occur for the following reason, client not there, 
you will be charged. And so it gives you a very clear communication to your client of what happened and what they're being charged for, right? And of course, the red button is to cancel walks. Okay, so that's how you can manipulate schedules in the load balancing tool. The other thing that you can do here is that you can start to create schedules that make sense for your walkers, right? So you can start to order them simply by changing the times, right? So if I look at this and say, you know, Augie is much closer to Darla and Nash than Kobe. Let me change him to the 11 o'clock appointment. Just like that, it's going to reorder it on the schedule, and it's going to reorder it under Walker's schedule. So once the schedule is set, uh, every night the system will automatically email the Walker's schedule to them. And then once that's been done, if you make changes to their schedule the day of, it'll follow up with a text. So now it's the end of a billing cycle and it's time to get paid. So let's go to invoices. And here are the invoices that have been created as your walkers check in and out of services. Better walkers are going to get slightly less automated here because we're starting to deal with money. And so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the invoice for Jack Wicker and we're simply going to review it. We're going to look at it, make sure that everything is correct. If it is correct, we'll simply mark it as reviewed. Uh, we'll look at Steffi's invoice here. If something is not correct, let's say this was the day that the walker tracked mud into the client's house, I can hit adjust amount. And right from the review page, I can make changes to the invoice. I can add a discount if I would like and so forth, right? But once the invoice is correct, I mark it as reviewed. Once it's been reviewed, it comes down into the reviewed queue, and I simply issue all reviewed. And when I do that, it's going to apply it to my client's balance, and they officially owe me that money, right? And we can look at uh, an invoice here really quickly. Um, when it's, invoice, when it's sent to your clients, this is what it's going to look like. It'll have your logo up here. It's going to show the services, who the walker was, the price. It's going to tell you what the total is for this invoice. But also, it's going to pick up any prior amount owed or any credit. So rather than just giving the amount on this invoice, Better Walker is always going to let your clients know exactly what their balance is. And when you charge them, if you integrate a merchant account with Better Walker and initiate charges on your client's behalf, it's going to charge against their balance and not just against the invoice. And then once all of the invoices have been issued, I can simply go over to the process charges page. And any client that has a card on file, I can initiate a charge against their account. Uh, otherwise, the invoices have been emailed to my clients and they can pay through their portal or they can leave a check however you do business. So that gives you a quick overview of the system. Uh, there are a lot of nooks and crannies in Better Walker that uh, I didn't get into. And certainly, Better Walker is fully customizable to your business model. So whether you bill weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, flexible billing, if you bill after services have been completed or prior to services being rendered, whatever your business model is, Better Walker can handle.